our today's unit is going to be human resource management, a unit called BBM 3107. Uh, my names are CHRP, Catherine Guli, Mount Kenya University, School of Business and Economics, Department of Management. So this is a unit which we are going to be taught this semester because it is a very, very important unit in any organization. Any industry succeeds or fails because of its human resources. Welcome to the class. Uh, as a way of introduction, we need to understand that any organization is made up of four important components. These important components are the human resources, which is part of our unit. We are going to learn more about human resource management. So it is one of the very important components or resources which help an organization succeed or fail. The other important resource in any organization is materials. Uh, for example, in a university setup, we have materials like books in the library, we have computers and those other things. We also need money, the finances. An organization cannot run without finances because there are employees there who we require to be compensated. So money or finances are very important in any organization. Then finally, we have the machinery. There are so many types of machines which are used in any organization. We have the computers, we have the photocopiers, and many others. So our unit for this semester is going to be based on our number one here, human resources, for our title is human resource management. So we are asking ourselves, who are the human resources or what is human resource management? But before we ask ourselves, what is human resource management? We need to understand who are these we are calling the human resources. So human resources as a way of definition are the employees of any organization these employees we can as well call them the human capital an organization does not just employ any person an organization which are whatever what they um, or they employ in a person are the skills the expertise the knowledge, the competences, the expertise, which the human resources, or rather the people who are to be employed or the potential employees possess. So actually, when employees go to get their paycheck, what is paid for is the knowledge, the expertise, the competences, the knowledge, the skills, which they are selling to that organization. Um, according to F.W. Harwick, he had remarked that business houses are made or broken in the long run, not by markets, all capitals, patents, or equipment, but by men or employees. What did he mean here? He meant that when you hear organizations are succeeding, like Safaricom and those other good companies, uh, what has brought about the success is the human resources. It is the employees, it is the human capital who have worked hard by investing their skills, by investing their knowledge, by investing their positive attitude to their work which has earned them success. When we hear that organizations are failing, 
when organizations, businesses are shutting down, it means that it is the employees who have not brought their first foot forward, provided the organization has provided all the equipment, the right training to these employees in order to succeed. We still have another scholar called Peter F. Dranka, who, and I quote, say that man of all resources available in an organization can grow and develop. This is very, very important. The man we are talking about here are the employees in an organization. So we are saying in an ever-changing business environment, if any organization wants to succeed, then that organization must invest in the human resources. It must invest in the employees through taking them for refresher courses. Yeah? Here we should also know the difference between training and development, whereby even if they were trained and they have certificates, new knowledge is being developed. So they need also to be trained on the new knowledge so that they can be relevant in the new business market, which is ever dynamic. So we are saying that uh, no matter which topic we discuss in human resource management, everything we are going to discuss in human resource management is likely to center around um, what uh, Dr. Robert W. Service put as a very major objective in uh, teaching human resource management, whereby he said that uh, at any given time, for any organization to survive in a very competitive market, it has to make sure that, and I quote, it has the right people. It has the right people. It has the right employees. Like, for example, suppose the university wants to hire a lecturer in human resource. Yeah? This lecturer must have a wealth of knowledge in HR. He must have a wealth of experience in human resource management. Yeah? That will be the right person to be employed by an organization or a learning institution to teach human resource management. So here we are saying, and as you can see, we are saying that uh, the organization has the right people and we have underlined the right people. So it's not just any other person who can lecture, for example, in a university scenario, any unit. There are specific people who have what it takes in terms of a wealth of experience, knowledge, yeah, exposure to teach um, a, a particular unit. We are also saying that we have now to align the right people with the right positions. Right positions here is also underlined. What do I mean? I'm saying that there is need to be the right match, the best fit and match between the right person and the right position. Yeah, because if there will be a mismatch of the right person and the position, then this employee is likely not to deliver. We are also saying that uh, we need to empower employees with the right training. Yes, we need to ensure that our employees have got the right skills and more so, the most current skill, because knowledge is ever evolving. There is new knowledge which is being generated every day. So we should make sure that our employees, who we refer here as the human capital, all are the human resources in our organization, have got the right expected skills which match with the tasks which we are giving them to perform in an organization. Because remember here what we are paying is the skills, the competence, that package which we bought as an organization from uh, one 
of our employees or uh, the employees who are working for an organization. We are also saying that we should ensure that uh, our employees or the human resources or the human capital we are having are having the best motivation we can afford because we know that uh, there is a lot of competition in the job market. If we don't compensate our employees well as a way of motivation, we are likely to lose them to our competitors. So as you can see, human resource management is a very key unit to students who are preparing to pursue managerial positions in our Kenyan institutions and beyond. Yeah. So we are saying that the human resources should also be able to have the right motivation to do tasks, tasks effectively and efficiently. That is within the right time. And as I said, this is quoted from Service and London 2020. Fine. I want to believe that we have understood what human resources are. They are the employees. Yes, they are the people who have been employed to help an organization achieve its goals, achieve its objectives. Yeah, because we have said that organizations fail or succeed by using the human resources through equipping those employees who are referring to as human resources with what it takes, the right attitude, as you have said, the right expertise, the right skills, the right knowledge, uh, the right competences, etc. So our unit is human resource management, and I want to believe now, as I take you through uh, the purpose of the unit, we already understand all human resources are the employees or the human capital in an organization, yeah? And the human resources bring in the human aspect in an organization. So the purpose of the unit is to introduce learners to the field of human resource management by exposing them to the key areas of the unit, yeah? Now we have known that uh, human resource management is all about employees. So this unit is going to prepare us to be able to understand when now, because you have already chosen your career subject. Yeah? Some of you have even human resource management as an option, you know, their area of expertise. And now we are grooming you to be a human resource manager. So what is going to be your work in a human resource office where you're going to be employed? What are going to be your expectations? What are going to be your tasks, duties, part of your job description as a human resource manager? So purpose of the unit. And number one, we are saying to introduce learners to the field of human resource management by exposing uh, the learners to key areas like, for example, by the end of the unit, we are expected to have achieved the following learning outcomes. For example, uh, learners are expected by the end of the unit to be able to describe the organizational human resource process. And as we have said, a process involves steps. Yeah? So we need to know like, for example, if we want to recruit, we want to bring on board new employees um, to an organization, what are the steps? What are the requirements? Um, and such like things. We are now uh, on our outcome number two, and it is going to be to describe methods and processes of performance appraisal and compensation. How are we going to gauge our employees' performance? How are we going to measure their performance so that when you're going to be paying them, we are going to pay them, uh, you know, some compensation which is equal to the work done. 
Then uh, we are going to have our outcome number three, which is uh, to discuss the importance of training and development. Especially in this dynamic business world, we need to keep on training and developing our employees so that we remain relevant all our organizations remain relevant in the job market. Uh, the next outcome will be to discuss the procedures involved in job design and evaluation. So you're going to know what is a job design. Yeah? How can we evaluate a job design to know whether it is working for our organization or not? Yeah? Is it helping us to achieve our targets, our objectives for the organization? And if not, then we revise on them. And also going to look at government involvement in human resource management. How does the government come in, especially when we talk about industrial and uh, employee relations? Now to our course topics. For us to be conversant with the field of human resource management, we need to cover some topics. They are actually very wide. We can pick one and go with it throughout the semester and we may not be able to finish because it is very wide. But uh, we have picked a few areas here and there which is going to give us an insight into the expectations of human resource managers, human resource management, and the tasks involved in a human resource office. So the first topic is going to be organizational assessment and human resource planning. How do we know organizational needs? We said that we know organizational needs by doing what we call a needs assessment. So every organization in departments, uh, in schools, like for example in a university setup, uh, we need to do what we call a needs assessment so that we can be able now to be able to, in the overall, to know what organizational assessment results are and we improve or equip um, the areas which we feel are having blanks or gaps. We'll also look at human resource planning. Yeah? And here we say, when talking about human resource, we're talking about employees. How do we plan for our employees? How do we plan for our manpower? How do we plan about our human capital? How do we know we are supposed to employ? When do we know we are supposed to downsize on the number of our employees? When do we know we're supposed to go for training? Do we know our employees who are about to go for retirement so that we prepare for them? Yeah? Do we have succession planning? Yeah, we know that uh, employees are not permanent to an organization. They come, when they come, they are at the mercy of the organization. Yeah? But we know that when now they are leaving, at times the organizations are at the mercy of the employees. At times they do not even uh, give notice that they are leaving. So in the event that an employee leaves, he had not given any notice, have we prepared for that? That is succession planning. Have we mentored another employee yeah, uh, with the right skills, ex whatever expectations, abilities, and attitudes to be able to fit um, in that uh, position? So in that chapter one, we look at introduction, importance, functions, and then we'll also look at uh, challenges of modern human resource management. There are many. We'll be able to look at them, I promise, before we're done with the uh, presentation. Number two, employee sourcing. Where do organizations get their human resources? We know uh, what we learned in our business studies, there is internal recruitment, there is external recruitment. So we're going to still look at that, but uh, in details a bit. Uh, then we're also going to look at succession planning, which I've also mentioned. Then our topic three is going to be on job analysis. Job analysis. What is job analysis? Job analysis is gathering all the information we require about a certain job, about a certain position, so that we can be able to make important decisions in our organization. Like, for example, who to transfer, who to promote, who to take on training, yeah, and such like things. So... Are we going to look at a uh, use of job analysis information? And I've just given you one of the uses. It is to make, uh, to help the organization make important decisions concerning employees. Then we'll also look at uh, methods of collecting that information on job analysis. We look at interview guides and also I uh, will be able to be guided on how to write a job description because employees do not just wake up from their home go to office, work out of the blues, and in the evening they go home. No, 
when they are being employed, they're given a document called a job description. A job description is a document which details all the responsibilities, the duties, the tasks, the expectation of a certain officer in an office. A very good example, for example, in a university scenario like ours, here we have the schools. The school is aided by the dean. The dean has a job description. What is he expected to do in his office? At the department level, we have the head of department. He has a job description. What the university is expecting him to do, the tasks, the responsibilities, the duties, which keep him busy in his office as a way of helping the university to achieve its objective and overall goal. Um, we also have um, a topic on performance management because employees are employed by an organization to help those organizations succeed, increase on productivity, improve on quality, you know, to, uh, like, for example, place the organization, yeah, uh, in a very good picture uh, out there in terms of performance and productivity. So how can we uh, make sure that our employees, our human resources are performing at their best? They are placing their best foot forward to be able to make the organization achieve its objectives and also uh, targets. So here we are going to look at the performance appraisal. How do you gauge employees' performance on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis? Yeah? How is their performance improving? Is it improving? Is it declining? Or it's at the same level? And what are we going to do about it, especially when we find that they are not performing? Then we are going to look at job evaluation purposes and methods. We are going to look at employee testing and selection. Because when employees come to join an organization, they are not just taken to an office. They are taken through testing and selection. So uh, this is what we are going to look at, employee recruitment and selection. What is recruitment? When you're in first year in business studies, we are told that um, you know, recruitment is a process of an organization attracting a large pool of potential employees who have got the right competences, who have got the right knowledge, the right experience, the right skills, the right attitude and knowledge to be able to fill available vacancies in an organization. What is selection? Selection is a method of discriminating and rejecting on the applications which, we have, which have been made by applicants to an organization so that an organization is left with the very best, the most qualified, the most competent to be able to fill a certain gap available in an organization. So in employee testing and selection, we look at the best, basic testing concepts. We look at interviews and the law. Yeah. We are also going to look at guidelines for conducting an interview. Because remember, for those of you who have taken a human resource option, uh, with time you're going to be human resource managers and you're going to be a panelist in those uh, panels for employment, yeah? In those interviews. Uh, what are the guidelines, yeah, for those interviews? How do you prepare for an interview and such like things? We will be expected to do a continuous assessment test, yeah? So we need to take our classes seriously. During our own time, we revise on our own because uh, the cuts, the continuous assessment test, count for together with the assignment 30%. Uh, of the total assessment of the unit at the end of the semester. So we look at job design, definition, approaches, and especially job design during this time of changing technology in office systems. We are by using internet, interconnectivity, globalization. Yes. So uh, that is a very important topic. 
technology, technology. Remember we are told that you are expected to change with the technology or technology will uh, get rid of us from our job positions or it can even lack of it can make us close our organizations. So we need to keep on updating ourselves with the current technology, human resource management systems, ETC. Yeah. So we are also going to look at um, another chapter on labor relations whereby we look at its elements, industrial relations as a system of rules. Like, for example, at times we see employees going on strike. What involves them to go on strike? What are they supposed to uh, consider? What is a legal strike? What is an illegal strike? Those are things we are going to look at. We are also going to look at industrial relations as a system of rules, as I've said. Collective bargaining and collective agreements. Uh, You'll also look at uh, the role of human resource functions in employee relations, uh, employee relations policies, and third party dispute resolution. When uh, the representatives of the management and those ones of the empl employees are not able to agree, uh, then we need a third party uh, intervention to be able to make uh the discussions or the dialogue the negotiations uh take shape we are also going to look at diversity and gender issues the place of women in the workplace yeah we look at the salaries if uh, there are women working in the same position the same organization with their male counterparts if they pay the same if it's not the same why and what has led to that and what can be done so that uh we make sure that um Women feel that uh, their positions, their competences, their skills, their knowledge is being valued at the workplace. Then uh, finally, we are going to look at government involvement in human resources, where we are going to look at human resource development policy. We look at the role of government in human resource management and the Ministry of Labor and the Industrial Court of Kenya. Industrial Court of Kenya is the court which deals with employment related disputes or uh, misunderstandings especially between employees and employers uh, we're also going to look at job satisfaction and motivation at work at, at times you hear that uh, maybe a relative a friend you know uh, has left an organization and they'll tell you that they felt they were not motivated at work yeah all i didn't have job satisfaction so how can us as human resource managers or the human resource management office ensure that our employees enjoy job satisfaction and they feel motivated organizations should not give employees especially the best performing ones any reason to leave they should motivate them to retain them and uh, finally uh, we have uh, the success system whereby we need organizations to ensure there are policy strategies to retain employees in the organization and the organization has to remain sound in the business world. So we are going to look at organizational strategies. So there we are going to have uh, teaching and learning methodologies as they have been explained there. We'll also have instructional methods and equipments. We also have the course assessment as you have seen we have a list of recommended books. These are just three, but there are many. So uh, with all that uh, which we had explained, we need now to be specific on um, what human resource management is all about. All that which I have taught. How can we summarize it to be the definition of human resource management? I was saying human resource management is a strategic approach. Yeah? It is a strategic, it's a strategy, it's a plan to the effective management of people in an organization such that they help the business gain a competitive advantage. Buildings do not succeed. Offices do not succeed. It is the employees, the human resources, the human capital which help organizations to succeed or fail. So... Uh, we have learned that uh, through our principles of management unit that uh, management means getting work done through people. So in human resource, we are asking ourselves, how can we utilize, strategically utilize our employees to help us 
improve on productivity, to help us improve on the quality of our, um, our workings, to help us achieve a competitive advantage in a very dynamic business world. So you are saying that the overall purpose of human resource management is to ensure that the organization is able to achieve success through people. How can organizations achieve success through using its human capital or its employees? Uh, I have a demonstration there showing all what I've been explaining about human resources. I want to assume what we are seeing there is um, an organization and the person standing at the middle is the human resource manager who is in charge of the human resources or the employees and you can see that we have different employees and they are all waiting to get instructions to be directed by the human resource manager each one of those employees has got uh, different skills knowledge competences experience expertise to do a particular job so this is now what you are talking about human resource management these are employees who this organization is trusting to help it achieve a competitive age improve on productivity improve on the quality of what is doing to achieve a competitive and advantage to have the organization cover niche in the business wild uh, we also have um, another demonstration there of the human resource processes and all these processes three quarters of them i've talked about them uh, in the course outline like for example here we are talking about recruitment selection training assessing performance that is performance appraisal motivating rewards that is compensation yeah we are also talking about OSHA, that is uh, safety of employees um, at the workplace. So this is, uh, like for example, the OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Act. It is an act of parliament where organizations are expected to ensure that employees work under safe uh, offices, environment, which is free from any type of danger and diseases. That is why we talked about the government involvement in human resources. Then there is also how can we maintain good labor relations, good relationships between employees and employers. How can, uh, like for example, an organization limit, reduce, um, uh, reduce the grievances, the disputes, Remember when every time every other organ or an organization is uh, on the papers because employees have gone on strike ETC, it brings about a negative public image uh, in that organization. So we will be looking at each of these later. Yes. So uh, we, are, we have areas which are covered in human resources, as we have said, selection, uh, recruitment and selection training and development, performance management, reward management, how do we compensate our employees? And remember, we usually say that employees work or they go looking for jobs because they have got needs which are not met. So they work in an attempt to get a compensation or a salary which is going to help them uh, satisfy their needs. Maybe not 100%, but to a certain acceptable level. Yeah? So, they are pushed by utility maximization to look for these jobs, yeah? And the organization itself is pushed by one major objective, profit maximization. Organizations employ human resources to help it maximize on profits. So in the event that uh, an employee finds that they are paid, uh, or, they are, or rather they are compensated for the labor they have invested in the organization, but whatever they are paid is not enough, that is why you find that every other time they are applying for jobs elsewhere, where they feel the grass is greener and whereby they feel the compensation in that other organization will help them to a certain acceptable le level to be able to satisfy uh, their needs. 
Uh, then uh, we are talking about performance management, reward management, and very importantly, and especially during this time in academia, knowledge and talent management. An organization does not own employees. They can live at will. And remember, we have talked about training and development. An organization can have invested a lot of money in a particular employee in terms of training and development. So you find that when these employees are leaving, they will live with that training. And remember, an organization in CAD are costing that. So in human resource management, we'll try to see how can an organization try to store this information such that even if that employee leaves, this knowledge is left within the organization and it can be used uh, to be able to develop the organization further. Some employees have got a wealth of talent in some areas. How do we store this talent? How do we tap this knowledge, uh, talent, so that even after the employee leaves the organization, by natural attrition, that is by any reason or another, it could be, be through uh, maybe resignation, retirement, etc. How can the organization still benefit from that talent of the employee who left the organization? Then uh, we have talked about employee relations. Uh, which is also a very important area in human resource management. Then here, at the middle here, we are having a human resource manager in this demonstration at the middle of an organization. And we are asking ourselves, what is this human resource manager charged with? Or what do the human resource manager man in the office? So the human resource manager in an organization is responsible or part of the job description is about resourcing human resource development to make sure that um, the skills, competences of employees are sharpened every other time because knowledge keeps on developing. Then there is performance management, ensure performance, the quality of work done within what time, is it the expected time, and are the results as expected. We have talked about knowledge and management. It's also part of uh, HR. Reward management, issues to do with uh, compensation of employees. Remember, compensation could be monetary or non-monetary, intrinsic or extrinsic. And then you have the issue of employee relations. How do they relate? How do they coexist? Are they living in harmony? Are employees given some voice to express their views? in important management decisions which affect them, uh, ETC. Yeah, so still in human resource management, uh, we need to know what is the work in doing all these things. Yeah, so the managerial functions in human resource, we are saying functions of human resource management are divided into two. We have the managerial functions, which are planning. Remember we told we plan because if we fail to plan, we are planning to fail. Then organizing. What do you mean by organizing? Organization, organizing is putting all the related uh, departments together, or rather putting together, bringing together the related tasks, putting them in one department, and also assigning people who are qualified with skills, competences, and expertise to those departments so that they will be able to perform. Staffing. Staffing is the work of the human resource office. Looking for the right people with the right skills, the right competences, the right attitude to fill positions available in an organization. Remember I said in a person, what the organization employs is the skills. That is what the organization wants to engage. The skills, the competences, the wealth of knowledge which you have earned probably from your first degree all the way to PhD and the wealth of uh, experience in very many other institutions uh, out there. We are talking of direct, uh, direction or directing. Employees need to be shown the way. You don't need to tell an employee has done something wrong yet you have not directed them on what to do. They need to be guided. They need to be controlled. Yeah. If uh, they have been given a specific time to complete a task, Somebody needs to ensure that that task has been done within that time. Uh, then there is also coordinating. 
the, the, the different departments need to coordinate so that there is overall success, yeah? So they need to work as a team. That coordination is very, very important. Then we have uh, operative functions, and one of them is procurement. When you're talking about procurement in HR, we are not talking about buying goods. We are talking about getting the right employees for the organization with the right skills. Uh, procurement is about training and development, compensation, maintenance. Because at times when you're talking about maintenance, you're not talking about maintenance of machines. It's those employees. Because in most organizations, they're very good at attracting talent, attracting skills, knowledge, but it becomes a very uh, different ball game when it becomes to uh, retaining the employees. So you find that uh, employees leave the organization as soon as they join them because the organization has got very poor retention strategies. Then uh, we are also talking about motivation, yeah, and then there's integration. And uh, I have demonstrated very well those two uh, functions of human resource, which are managerial functions there in blue, and also the operative functions. During your own time, I want to go, I want you to go look at them one by one and get into the depth of it to know what they are all about and why they are important in the Office of the Human Resource Management. Uh, objectives of human resource management are there, number one, to achieve the organizational goals through human resources. Each organization was formed because it had objectives it wanted to achieve. Like, for example, here, the university, that is Mount Kenya University, being a learning institution, has an objective of producing quality graduates and churning them into the job market. So, it needs human resources, competent lecturers, experienced lecturers, to be able to teach those students and prepare them for the job market, to develop and maintain sound industrial relations. Human resource management is all about creating a good working relationship between employees, employers, and even the surrounding and environment. Uh, then to integrate individual and group goals within an organization. An organization has its goals. It wants to achieve. An individual has their goals. So at the end of the day, we want the organization to achieve their goals, and the individual employees should also be helped by the organization to achieve their goals so that uh, there is a win-win situation. The organization benefits and the empl individual employee does not feel left behind. We are also talking about training and the development of employees, and that one uh, we have really emphasized in today's class. We are also talking about to identify and satisfy individual group and organizational goals, because if we do not satisfy employees' goals, they will leave our organization. They may be pushed by our competitors, but if we help individual employees achieve their goals, then they will willingly be able to go a step further, an extra mile to help the organization achieve its goals. Then we are also talking about motivation of employees to develop the human assets. Yeah, human resources are assets. Actually, an asset you cannot replace in an organization. What we say that uh, an employee can leave an organization, a very good employee, an organization can replace the position, an organization can replace that position, but it may never get a person with those rare skills, competences, knowledge, and expertise for this employee who has left. Then we're also talking about complying with the labor laws. Because if we don't comply with the labor laws, then we are going to find ourselves uh, on the wrong side of the law. So as we perform, as we employ, there are labor laws which govern employment, recruitment. If it is training, they are there. Yeah? If it is dispute, 
uh, an organization has found that uh, it is going to a dispute with one of the employees. There are procedures, you know, dispute settling procedure. And there are steps which require to be followed. Uh, we are also saying that um, an objective uh, of uh, HR is to provide an opportunity to, for employees to participate in management. Give some space for employees to air their views. And then we are, you know, air their views without being victimized or intimidated. Then also talking about to attract and retain. You know, it's not about attracting, but we are also talking about retaining the best talented, the best skilled, the best experienced uh, employees in our organization so that they can help us achieve a competitive advantage. Uh, we now come to the summary um, and conclusion of the class. Uh, we are saying that um, having understood what the unit is all about, having taken you through an uh, in-depth overview of the course outline, I want uh, to very quickly mention some challenges which today's human resource managers are faced with. And as you are all aware, most of the employees in most of, of organizations, actually almost all organizations are at, at home. Remember, they are not on leave. But the government decided that uh, employees should stay at home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The organizations are expected or are expecting these employees to be at work, working. So work is not being done. At the end of the month, these employees are getting paid. The organizations have no control. When the government says employees stay at home, then the directive has to be obeyed by organization. So this is a challenge because there is work which needs to be done and employees are not in the office. That is a challenge. Uh, we also have uh, the Y generation challenge. The young people in employment, they are very talented, especially when it comes to issues to do with technology. They are the best. But, you know, from the universities, uh, they were dressing the way they want. And now they get employed, they are told, you work in a bank, you're supposed to be in a suit, in a tie. You know, they do not understand that. They just want to dress casually, go to work. Because to them, so long as they are performing, dressing has nothing to do with the work. But you see, the work has rules and regulations. That is a challenge. Yeah? We are also talking about bridging the gap between the Generation Y and the old generation, whereby the old generation are viewing the Y generation as a challenge. I think that because these people are so much techno savvy, they are coming to take up our jobs. Yeah? So that is also a challenge. We have a challenge with also what we're calling performance contracting. Yeah. You have to sign a performance contract. You have to meet certain targets if you are to secure your job. That becomes a challenge because you'll find that uh, there are some things which are out of your control. Issues to do with technology. Every employee of late working in an organization worth its thought needs to be computer literate. To be actually, most organizations have gone paperless. Yeah? Everything is done using the internet. We are talking about the old generation who are not so much willing to train in the new technology because they have one year to retire, two years to retire, uh, ETC. So that is also a challenge which uh, HR managers are faced with. Another challenge is also poaching of the best employees. The highly skilled, the highly talented, the competitors are poaching them. That is, that is a big challenge. Whereby the HR office, the organization needs to know what can we do to ensure that we treat our employees well in terms of the social welfare, in terms of the pay package, training ETC to ensure that um, we retain our employees and we do not give them a reason of uh, going elsewhere. So the challenges are very many. The challenges are very many. Uh, during your own time, 
You can try to come up with like 10 because they are extremely many. Yeah. Another challenge, uh, maybe uh, as I finish, is whereby every other employee wants to go back to school. Yeah. They want to improve on their papers. They want to get promotions. They find that to get this promotion, I'm expected to have a master's degree. Now I only have a first degree. To get this, I need a, a PhD degree. Now I have a master's. So now balancing on those ones who are going to be on paid leave, whether, uh, or, or, sorry, to go on study leave, whether paid or unpaid, then uh, it, becomes, it becomes a challenge. So um, there are many challenges. We have got uh, the challenges of uh, running organizations, especially right now, times of COVID, very, very expensive, whereby organizations are forced uh, to send their employee, employees on unpaid leave, others on half salary, yeah? And how even the offices are going to run with maybe uh, three quarters of the staff at home due to COVID. Uh, as I finish, I need to leave you with an assignment which needs to keep you busy until the next class. So, um, the assignment is on what I mentioned in chapter one, which is organizational assessment. Yeah, I want you to go and read and make notes on organizational assessment. I've already defined what it is, but I want you to go and find out what, it, what is it all about? Why is it done? What are the advantages of organizational assessment? I've also talked about, like, for example, a needs assessment in an organization. What is it all about? How is it done? How does it help the organization to get the right employees in the right positions at the right time? Uh, and finally, uh, you also need to write, to read widely on human resource planning. Human resources are the employees. What is human resource plan? We said this is coming up with strategies on how you're going to be able to program, to have programs for all these employees so that uh, they will work to the maximum to ensure that succession planning is done, to ensure that training is done, to ensure that uh, new technology has been trained on, has been trained on our employees and such like things. And we even plan for the future, plan for the future because the business world is uh, dynamic. So uh, we are going to end there for the class, hoping that you're going to take the assignment seriously and we meet during the next lesson. I want to believe that at this point in time, we are all able to at least explain to a person who does not know anything about human resource management, what the course is all about, of a human resource manager without missing words. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.